All right, guys, good old boy 32 here. Check it out. We are in the Freedom Shack on the Freedom Review table. And in front of us, we've got a really cool project that I've had going on for quite some time. I mean, this is it's different from just putting together a rifle or building something. But normally what I would do when I'm building a rifle, I go, what am I going to be doing with that specific firearm? Am I going to be doing CQB? Am I going to be doing precision? Am I going to have fun gun? That kind of thing. Something new. Four identical ARs. And this is kind of like, you know, the dream of having your own little armory. Well, here's the beginning. And it all started off when I did the econ build a long time ago. I will be putting all this stuff on my website website called kb32tac.com and a parts list on this thing. Now, a lot of this stuff is is taking a long time, as you know, because, well, handguards, they're not readily available like they used to be. Upper receivers, even charging handles. But this is pretty simple. Uh, we've got just a regular upper receiver. I think these, I got, I don't even know where I got these. I've had them quite some time now. Uh, the Gun Tech USA. These guys right here are some of the best handguards for the money. 78 bucks or whatever, but they are made in the USA. And then I got a Bear Creek Arsenal Barrel. These are the, uh, just a regular M4 Profile with the 1 and 8 twist with a Yankee Hill Machine uh, MC51 Phantom, I believe this is this. But these guys, in my opinion give you the basis of a really good system. Now, I've taken this barrel out on a different upper that they actually sent me for testing and shot the 77 grain through it and got a one-inch group, which is pretty good for a, I don't know, $83 barrel. So in any case, we're moving on from that. These are the uppers right here. And we've got just a regular CMMG lower parts kit. So we're going to take a look at that. And then what we wanted to do next is this right here. Bolt carrier groups. Now, these guys right here are from the guys from uh, Palmetto State Army. I bought these, $129 with free shipping. And the reason I bought these is because I know that you guys, some of you guys might think I'm a full of crazy, uh, but I've never had a problem out of my PSA bulk carriers. I've had some people tell me they've had issues with extraction and things of that nature. Uh, guys, if you're bolt, check it out in some other rifles just to make sure but I've never had any issues. Now, that's not to say that I won't have any issues in the future. But what I wanted to do was take you guys through a comparison. I'm not going to do a review on it, but I want to see how close these guys are to each other. And that's why you've got all the pins out here. Now, in my opinion, this is a BCG from the guys over there at Cryptic Coatings. I want you to look at that beautiful beast. This is by far one of the greatest looking highest tolerance. I did a video on this thing where I used the gauge pins to actually go through and show you, but I also looked at the specifications from the original drawings uh, for the bulk carrier group, and that's where we got all of our sizes. So let's do this real quickly. I'm going to tear these things down, and then we're going to take a look at something. Now I will tell you straight off, the first complaint that I have on this is the staking. Now is that inadequate? Uh, if you're going to throw a thousand rounds down range, I doubt that's going to move on you. But we do have a couple tools here in front of us, which is another thing that we're going to be doing down the road. Uh, stake key, uh, staking tool right here. Uh, we're going to be putting a gas keys on a couple bolt carriers and assembling those. And we're going to use this guy right here. Also, this little booger right here. A lot of you guys who are machinists can look at that and go, Ooh, I know what the hell. I can make that. <laughs> you probably can. But what is this? This is so we can remove the ejector pin and spring and check out, I don't know, maybe uh, go, no, go, J gauges, things like that. And this is a pretty neat little tool. If you're working with AR-15s like I do, you want to have all these tools. Okay, so let's do this. The first thing I can tell you in looking at these guys, I ordered these all at the same time. They literally were at my door in 48 hours. I couldn't believe how fast they got those. And that's not using any special names or anything else. Here's the thing. They're all supposed to be uh, 158 carpenter steel, and they're all supposed to be magnetically, particle inspected and stamped. But on this particular bolt right there, I don't know if you guys can see that, but she's not stamped. Does that mean it's not been magnetically particle inspected? Probably not. I don't know. Don't really care. Uh... Never had any issues at it, but I can tell you by looking at it in the machining that it is completely different from these guys. Let me do this. I'm going to bring the camera in so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. Here we go. 
All right, so now we're looking at is I've got a bolt in here that is not necessarily the one that should have come in this little package. And we can tell that because of the machining marks right here all the way around. And it's just a little, you can see the machining marks here, but when you look at this guy right here, they are not there. So there's a little bit of a difference in that whole thing. Uh, yeah. All right. So let's do this real quickly. I'm just going to do some sporadic checking, uh, which is one of the things that they'll do when they do a carrier group. They'll out of like 10 of them, they may, they may test just one. So let's go ahead and start off by doing this. We're going to remove this little booger right here. We'll keep these things separated. There we go. All right, so one of the things that I always check on is the intersection of the gas key. Now, the intersection specified per Stoner's drawings is a 0.116, plus or minus a 5 thousandths. So we'll go ahead and I'll pull out my 0.116. And what I want to do is I just want to make sure that it's going to go in the third smallest hole in there. And typically, when it does, it's going to sit in there pretty snug, just like that. But... Got a little bit of movement in there. I don't mind that. Let's pull out the old cryptic coatings one here. And that's got the same way, but it's pretty tight in there. Pretty good, same amount of movement. Pretty good. Pretty good here. All right, that one's just a little tighter. I like that. Okay, let's bring these guys back in. All right, so one of the other things we want to check is the cam hole. All right, so this guy is going to be 0 0.32175, and it increases to one side of it. So 0 0.32175. Let's get on up here. All right, so one of the things I can tell you is that on the cryptic coatings, the actual size of what I came up with was a 0 0.312. So we pulled a 0 0.312 out on this guy, and let's check. All right, she goes all the way to the end. Same thing here, same thing, wait, ah, oh, there we go, perfect, and there we go, all right, very good, so those all fit, excellent. All right, the next thing I want to start checking on, and I'm not really worried about the firing pin rear pole, the firing pin bolt face hole. Uh, all right, let's just do that. 0 0.063 is what we're supposed to have. Here we go. We're going to 0 0.063, and that should go in there with the, not a whole lot of play. And there is a plus or minus on this guy. Uh, 0 0.063 is what we actually had on that other one. This is not going to fit right here. All right, so let's go ahead and 0 0.062. And I actually have the protrusion grade gauge, protrusion gauge, but I'm not going to do that. Now we do have a plus or minus a 0 .003. We do have a plus or minus of a uh, one thousandths on that one, so that's fine. Let's go ahead and figure this one out here. Let's not get those things screwed up. A little bit more room in that one. Let's see here. Will that go to point? No. Yep. We got that guy. She'll fit with a point zero six three. Let's see where we are on this guy. Nope. 0 0.062. Yeah. 0 0.062 freely. Let's go ahead and try with a 0 0.063. Huh. And here is the difference. I don't think this bolt should have been in that carrier. There we go. And it's a uh, the difference of two thousandths all the way around. Okay, so let's take a look at the carrier here we're going to talk about the uh there's about six different measurements that i really like to check on these guys we're talking about the front gas ring hole the front hole bolt hole the interior core section the middle core section rear core section and the firing pin retaining hole which i'm not really concerned about here right now so the first one we want to look at is the front gas ring hole and that is supposed to spec out at 0.4984 so we will go ahead and 0.98. Here we go. It's pretty tight right there. Uh, you got a plus or minus 
of a, a uh, four thousandths. So this actually would go up. So that one's really tight right there. I like the way that's fitting. Let's go ahead and take the same one and put it in here like this. Very nice, no movement. Here we go. And all these are chrome line, by the way. Let's go ahead and put that in there. So that one's good. All right, so these guys are doing pretty good as far as the gauging is concerned. The uh, middle core section is a 0.281. We're not going to worry about that. Yeah, we might just go ahead and throw that up in there because that's going to matter. So let's do that. So a interior core section is 0.2514. And basically what should happen is this guy should fall in there and it should go right into that center section and it should not provide with any movement. This one's moving around just a little bit. So let's go ahead. Two, five, one, two. Now there is a, what do you call it? Uh, plus or minus of a three hundreds of a thousand, three, three thousands, unless I typed that wrong. Let's go ahead and put that in there. And she'll barely go in there, which is good. Okay, we don't want it much bigger than that. There we go. So let's go ahead and put it into this guy here. Let's drop it in from this end. <laughs> and it goes in, and it's very smooth all the way through. All right, go ahead and bring it in this guy. And considering that these were all manufactured in the same plant, the same probably, uh, at least close to the same CNC machine. Uh, yeah, there we go. All right. Same thing here. Yeah, perfect. Nice. Okay. So now we are going to check, let's see the, let's just do the rear core section, which is a 0.437. So what we'll do is we'll drop that in. And we're going to make sure that that is fitting in that little area right there. And this one, yeah, that's tight. This is nice. I like them when they're tight like that. Oh yeah. So let's take a look at this. And she is a little on the real tight side, so she didn't like that. All right, so anyway, uh, we got this guy right here, and we are testing it out. So we went down. Uh, we went from a 0.437. I thought it was. Was it a point? Yeah, to a 0.436, and that seems to be fitting in just about everything really nicely and snug. Which is fine because that's within the acceptance and the tolerances of this cut here. Very nice. I like that. But yeah, all together, guys, here's the whole thing. Uh, we can sit here and we can gauge pin these things to no end. If it runs, it runs. If it doesn't run, chunk it and get you another one. All right, so one of the things that I'm really concerned about is this right here, uh, this guy. So let's do this real quickly. Let's go ahead and remove our pin there. I want to see this guy. So it's got a donut on there, so obviously they drew this from the correct pile. Keep moving. Oh, here we go. So here's the thing. On the extractors, and I'm going to keep them in order, you got a little hash mark right there on this one. That one's faint. You can almost see it. This one is more distinct, and then this one, there is not one there. So these are the things that I look at down the road. One, two, three, four. Take a look at the face, the milling. And again, the only thing that's different here between these two and the other ones, or this one and the other ones, is the tooling mark. So this is probably one that is not up to spec for what I bought. So we'll make a phone call and get that taken care of. Uh, you can look at the... Yeah, so look at the big differences in the... The locking lugs, they are actually different sizes. This one on this car this bolt is are bigger. And there are different sizes in the uh, the bolt lugs. Wow. Okay. So we'll make a phone call. Have them send us out a new bolt, hopefully. 
We'll just play dumb on that one. Anyway, guys, uh, so this is uh, the bolt carrier portion of this whole thing. This kind of falls in line also with the uh, bolt carrier uh, video series that I'm doing. Um, just got a call about 20 minutes ago, found out that uh, my brother passed away. So I wanted to go ahead and finish this video series up because I'm going to probably have to take a day or two off from doing videos, but we'll see until we figure out what's going to happen there. Uh, I'm going to go live here. You'll probably see the live video before this thing goes out, but I pay homage to my best friend, uh, my brother, uh, remember uh, a platoon leader in the 3rd Range Battalion. He was also a drill sergeant, E6. So he went from uh, being a non-commissioned officer to an officer. He jumped into Rio Hato down in Panama. Uh, really good guy. I'm going to miss him. We had our long conversations. Uh, but with that being said, guys, I don't want to be a, what do you call it, a party pooper. We always end them like this. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support the boys and, and women, red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women, in uniform 24-7 for our freedom. This freedom is not free. KB32, I'm out. Y'all be good.